I'm Steve Young. I was a writer for Late Night with David Letterman and Late Show with David Letterman. Started in 1990, went to the end in 2015. And as you'd expect, in 25 years, yes, there were a few highlights and uh, a lot of memories and vivid stories. So I started with the Late Night Show in spring of 1990. Head writer Steve O'Donnell saw something in me that he thought he could mold in a useful way. And in the long term, I guess he was proven correct. But I, I really had not watched the show religiously. I had to ask a lot of embarrassing questions early on in meetings, like, who is this Calvert that everyone's talking about? Turns out, well, Calvert DeForest, known to the world at the time as Larry Bud Melman. But once in a while, early on, I did break through with something that was at least deemed producible. And uh, one early one that I do remember, and I haven't seen it in a thousand years, so it may lie there with no uh, entertainment value at all now, but uh, I do remember liking the idea, and it amazingly was produced very well. Okay, welcome back to the show. Coming up in this half hour, actor... Uh, Paul, did you miss something there? Did I? Hal! It seems like there's something yeah, different. Dave. Hal, isn't there usually some kind of applause or something when we come out of one of these uh, commercial deals like that? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure, not Dave. have applause? Yeah. Usually there are applause. Could, yeah. could you, is there something wrong with the applause sign, Hal? Let's take a look. All right, check and see, because normally we come out of the... Oh, see, look. Hostile silence. That would, that's the problem that right there. Explain it. Hal, you've got, a, you've got the applause sign set on the wrong place. Yeah, see what else you have up there. Okay. Yeah, let's see what this is. This is... Oh, jeers. No, no. No, no, let's... No. Let's check another selection there, Hal. Yeah. Cheers and yeah, switch it. There we go. Come show to no. Okay. No, no. Let's keep going, Hal. Let's just keep 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 going. No. <laughs> One piece which actually straddled the NBC show over to CBS, which I was uh, very proud of. Uh, it was called The Strong Guy, The Fat Guy, The Genius. I, at one point in the room, I guess, pitched uh, a bit where Dave walks around with a bodybuilder and asks people, do you have anything for the strong guy to break? And Rob Burnett, the head writer at the time, said, hmm, there's something appealing about that. Let me go in and talk to Mr. Letterman about that and see what he thinks. And he went away, and we all waited to see what would happen. And he came back in a while, and he said, well, this is interesting. I think you're going to like this. It's now going to be, do you have something for the strong guy to break? Do you have something for the fat guy to eat? Do you have a question for the genius? And we all went, oh. Can you break that clock? Do you have something for the uh, fat guy to eat? Head of lettuce? A head of lettuce? <laughs> if you got the best animal trainers in the world together, could you train a camel to ski? I think the key thing would be to get the camel out of the desert into some place where there's snow. But once that's done, I imagine it can be done. It could be done. Yeah, absolutely. Smart enough camel. Really At some point, I think Dave saw some early cuts of it and said, you know what we need in this piece is a theme song. Rob and I kind of sat down and put something together and hummed a few bits. And of course, the way Paul and the band would take these initial scraps of something and turn it into something magnificent within like what seemed like the blink of an eye was always so impressive. So suddenly we had not only this piece, but we had it, the strong guy, fat guy, genius song, which I still occasionally have running through my head is just one of those uh, perfect storms where everything lined up. Yeah. Let's go. The strong guy, the fat guy, the genius. God gave them each a special gift at birth. They break it, they eat it, they solve it. That's the reason they were put upon this earth. That's the reason they were put upon this earth. Fairly early in the CBS run, we did a week of shows in London. 
And one idea that came up, somebody is wearing a suit covered with bird seed and goes Trafal to Trafalgar Square, where there are literally hundreds or thousands of pigeons. The head writer at the time said, uh, well, hey, any of you uh, writers want to be in the bird seed suit and maybe have a lot of pigeons on you? And just everybody recoiled in horror. And I said, I'll do it. I don't care. How bad could it be? So... Suham, costume designer, puts together this suit. She glues rice cakes all over a suit jacket and also a helmet, puts peanut butter on the rice cakes, and then slathers bird seed on the peanut butter. So suddenly you're this walking mass of, well, bird seed, but also a few other components. There he is, coming out of the underground. He has the protective goggles on, and there the... Can you possibly... <laughs> Can you possibly imagine a more pleasant way to spend the day? I, I think not. I co-authored a book which came out in 2013 called Everything's Coming Up Profits, The Golden Age of Industrial Musicals. And this grew out of a bit on The Letterman Show. I had run the record collection bit for many years and I started finding, in the course of gathering material for that, these strange corporate souvenir albums from sales meetings and conventions that were musicals. Dave, uh, I think he was always very supportive of staffers who had interesting outside projects going. He said, oh yes, we'd, we should have Steve on the show. The cherry on top of this whole thing, aside from increased book sales, which were substantial, CBS's local affiliate in New York every uh, evening they would prepare a little uh, tease in, in their own newscast about what's coming up on The Letterman Show. During the 11 p.m. Uh, newscast before the show that I was going to be on, and coming up, we've got, of course, David Letterman, and Dave's guests tonight are Hall of Fame quarterback Steve Young, and there's footage of me walking out and waving at the beginning of my guest segment. After a commercial break, they came back and sort of red-faced, um, uh, just to clarify... Um, uh, not the quarterback on the Letterman show tonight. It's uh, a different guy with the same name. My hope is that the other Steve Young, even now, sometimes gets inquiries about, did you write a book about weird records? Did you, were you in a documentary? Then after the news on The Late Show, Dave's got Hall of Fame quarterback Steve Young and music from White Denim. Now just to clarify, Hall of Fame quarterback <laughs> Steve Young will not be on The Late Show. Right. It's another guy with the same name. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. The Late Show is next. Dave's guests are Steve Young, the writer, and music <laughs> from White Denim. I had an idea one day. I think it was uh, on uh, July 11th, the date 7-11. And I said, oh, what if we have a guy come out and pretend he's the CEO of 7-Eleven and he's got some grandiose plan for a big promo. If you walk into 7-Eleven and say Dave Letterman sent you, you get a free Slurpee or whatever. So we, we did that, and I think it caused a minor uproar in the 7-Eleven corporation. We did many installments with this guy. I think my favorite one, in early 2013, 2012 had ended without the Mayan apocalypse taking place. So I said, how about Jim Keyes is now uh, the head of public relations for the Mayans? Did the world end? No. Were the Mayans embarrassed? Absolutely. I'm here to admit that mistakes were made and that several high-ranking Mayans have been fired or reassigned. But we know that's not good enough for you folks. You were misled, disappointed, and inconvenienced. That's why we're making the following offer. If within the past 1,200 years you purchased one of the defective Mayan calendars, simply return it to the place of purchase for a full refund, plus a free 2013 Mayan Joker Day calendar. You'll love it. It's a real hoot. The Mayans are committed to making this right and regaining your trust. Thanks, and Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Very late in the game, I was starting to get more interested in writing songs. I had this idea for a song about the history of the Super Bowl. And the song was right at my wheelhouse of stupid and sort of clever, but so just jammed together stupid cleverness that maybe it would work. The lyrics of the song were just the recitation of Roman numerals. So it was I, I, I. 
I, 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 all the way up to 48. And I think when we did it, people in the audience, once they realized the premise of it were, oh no, he's not gonna, and then like by the time he was in the 20s and he was actually pulling it off, it was an incredible high wire act of rhythm and phrasing and pacing. And by the time the audience realized he's actually gonna land this plane, they were like, oh my God, this, and, and he got all the way up to 48 and it was this delirious moment. We don't know what we just saw, but it, somehow it worked. You know, the first Super Bowl was played on January 15th, 1967, and we've come a long way since then. Hit it, Paul. Oh, wow. I, 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 V, and next came V. V, I, V, I, I, V, I, 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 X, and X, you see? X, I, X, I, I, X, I, 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 X, I, V, and then X, V. X, V, I, X, V, I, I, X, V, I, 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 X, I, X, and X, X, count them with me. X, X, I, X, X, I, I, X, X, I, 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 X, X, I, V, X, X, V. X, X, V, I, X, X, V, I, I, X, X, V, I, 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 X, X, I, X, 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 it's easy. X, 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 I, X, 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 I, I, X, 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 I, 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 X, 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 I, V, X, 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 V, X, 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 V, I, X, 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 V, I, I, X, 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 V, I, 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 X, 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 I, X, X, L, obviously, X, L, I, X, L, I, I, X, L, I, I, XLIV and XLV. Oh, XLVI, 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 I, I, I. And that's the history. So, fairly late in my tenure in the Late Show's history, I was getting more interested in writing songs. I very cautiously decided to see, could I combine that sphere, music, with my quote-unquote day job of weird, clever, funny, verbal, whatever. And one of the very first times I tried that was uh, for Thanksgiving. We had some montage of what the staff does on Thanksgiving when we're all together for the show and having dinner together. And I had written a song about... Uh, the unpleasant uh, details of turkeys being uh, slaughtered and uh, butchered and prepared for consumption. This is Steve Young. Then the next step after the slaughter. Loosen the feathers in boiling water. Singing a song about turkey farming. Writers were sometimes put into pieces over the years, and I was not a trained actor, but I looked good in a lab coat, but uh, those were mostly pre-tapes. The, the more on the edge stuff was if you were going to do a live thing. And there was a, a live bit that involved a guy named uh, Cliff Wentworth had written into the show with some question and Dave said, well, Cliff Wentworth, what is it? And some guy in the audience would stand up and say, well, I'm Cliff Wentworth. And then another guy would stand up. Like three people would all stand up and claim to be Cliff Wentworth. For some reason, I had some neurological uh, little twist that made me have trouble remembering or saying the name Cliff Wentworth. Anytime I tried it in rehearsal, it kept coming out as Clint Wentworth. Somebody, uh, who I will not name, at the end of rehearsal said, now don't actually say Clint during the show. And, uh, oh, oh, okay. I stood up and said, my name is Clint Wentworth. I think on the tape you might be able to see the moment of panic in my eyes when I realize what I've just done. Uh, dear Dave, I recently received confirmation of tickets to the taping of your show on Friday, March 1st, 1991. That's today. That's this very damn day. You may not readily realize the significance of this, but I am a bona fide GE light bulb salesman. <laughs> I have attached my business card as quasi proof of this fact. Well, there it is, right there. Regards, Cliff Wentworth, Memphis, Tennessee. This uh, this ought to be pretty interesting. Is there, in fact, a, a Cliff Wentworth in the audience? A Mr. Cliff Wentworth. There he is. My name is Clint Wentworth. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Clint. <laughs> My name is Cliff Wentworth. Uh-huh. <laughs> My name is Cliff Wentworth. Only one of these three gentlemen is the real Cliff Wentworth, GE light bulb salesman. 
Is it number one? No, oh, that's Clint. Number two? <laughs> or number three? All right, let's go into the control room now to uh, Pete Fatovich. Our, uh, tell us, who, who is the actual Cliff Wentworth, Pete? Who gives a rat's ass? Sit down! That's, that's what I call comedy. That's fine. We had, we had two Cliff Wentworths, and coincidentally enough, oddly enough, one Clint Wentworth. <laughs> Isn't that strange? <laughs> that we can find two guys named Cliff Wentworth and yet another guy uh, named guy Clint Wentworth. Named Clint. There are ideas that you pitch that are just number 38 out of 100 ideas, and you don't know why this one gets chosen in particular. The premise was... There's trouble during the taping, and the, the camera shot starts bucking wildly, and you see the cameraman trying to hold on to this camera, which runs away under its own power, bursts out the Studio 6A doors at NBC, and makes a run for it somehow, this sentient camera. Dave enjoyed that. He referred to it as our little student film. And uh, also, uh, Michael Penn, a fine uh, musician and a great singer, will be out here with uh, music from his new uh, album. On Monday... Man, I, I wish that would stop. <laughs> Whew, make, make me a little queasy. Um, Ke Kevin Klein will... What is that? What is going on there? Is that, is that the camera? Is, that, is everyone all right? Oh, my God, the camera's gone nuts. Run, run for your lives, everyone. Oh, my God. to see that happen, especially at the holiday time. Different head writers would come and go, and, and, and people would uh, clean out the remnants of what the old head writer had been accumulating off to the side, and I found a page of my own ideas, and I started reading them. Oh my god, this is great! I don't remember this at all, but these ideas all seem like exactly like ideas I would like. I like this! And I don't know what they were, but just that sensation of myself but not me had done something which I completely recognized as valid to my voice and yet I had zero memory of it. These are terrific! Who wrote this? This is wonderful!